Hello everyone, I am Rahul Gosain. I'm a general medical oncologist working with University of Rochester in Rochester, New York. Hello everyone, I'm Rohit Gosain from UPMC Hillman Cancer Center, UPMC Chautauqua Hospital, and here reporting you live from ASCO 2023. And we are oncology brothers talking to Dr. Aditya Bardia. Dr. Bardia, welcome. Can you just introduce yourself and we'll dive right into some data. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I'm Aditya Bardia. I'm a breast medical oncologist at Massachusetts General Hospital, Harvard Medical School, involved in development of new drugs for patients with breast cancer. Thanks, Dr. Bardia, for joining us. We know that sasetuzumab, govitiken, has been approved in hormone receptor positive, HER2 negative space in metastatic uh, setting. Also, in metastatic triple negative breast cancer. Would you don't mind talking about what is exactly sasetuzumab, govitiken? Yeah, absolutely. Sasetuzumab govitiken is an antibody drug conjugate. So it has three components. The antibody targets trope 2, which is overexpressed in breast cancer. It has a linker which attaches the antibody to SN38, which is the active metabolite of irinotecan. So in a way, it's like irinotecan that's attached to a trope 2 directed antibody. And the vision is that the antibody drug conjugate binds to cancer cells that express the antigen and can deliver higher doses of payload selectively to cancer cells. In preclinical models, for example, sasetuzumab govitecan delivered 100 times more SN38 as compared to irinotecan. So that's the advantage that you can give higher doses of chemotherapy selectively to cancer cells. And I think it's important, you started off by saying the class of drug, this is ADCs, but within ADCs, each of these drugs are different. Um, Sasetuzumab Rohit, you started off by saying it's approved in breast cancer, it's also approved in bladder cancer. So as a generalist, we're seeing more and more of these drugs used across different disease sites. Coming back to Sasetuzumab, Trope 2 is what it's delivering the drug. Does that expression matter? We've seen some data from San Antonio and then more recent data. What are we looking at? Does that expression matter on how effective this drug is? So that's a very good question because for antibody drug conjugates, one would expect that the levels of expression of the antigen would impact efficacy. And the answer is somewhat. The reason being that these newer ADCs also have what is called a bystander effect. So if the antibody drug conjugate gets to inside a trope to positive cell, the payload is also released in the tumor microenvironment can affect cells that do not express the antigen. So as long as you have some level of expression that is sufficient to get the ADC in that region, and then because of the bystander effect, it can have an impact. And we are increasingly seeing this with antibody drug conjugates, with sasetuzumab govitecan, with trastuzumab duroxetan, her too low, yep. which we were not seeing with previously uh, developed antibody drug conjugates, the reason being they didn't have this bystander effect. Now, talking about where the hormone receptor uh, positive status stands, where exactly can we utilize and what line is it approved currently? So, sasetuzumab govitecan is FDA approved for patients with metastatic triple negative breast cancer in the first line and plus setting. It's also approved for patients with metastatic hormone receptor positive breast cancer who've received at least two prior lines of systemic therapy. The FDA label does not specify the type of systemic therapy. Some would broadly interpret that as even two lines of endocrine-based therapy. I think the intent is more where we're using chemotherapy. So if a patient needs chemotherapy, that's a setting where antibody drug conjugates should be used. And again, that's important, right? Because the indication or the FDA approval is different for what we're looking for, triple negative breast cancer. That is where we start to worry about how to sequence these drugs. And same thing when it comes to hormone receptor positive, we have approvals like TDXD in this setting as well, but the sequencing is important. And just because you've used one ADC should not deter you from using another one. We don't have enough data to say that we should not be using it. You're exactly right. In a way, ADCs are like chemotherapy agents. And in principle, that's what they're doing. They're delivering chemotherapy just in a smart way to cancer cells. We use chemotherapy after chemotherapy all the time. So in metastatic ER-positive breast cancer, they use capsidabine, then iribulin, then navalbine. It's a similar principle. So if a patient has HER2 low ER-positive breast cancer, say you start with trastuzumab duroxetan, then after that you can use sasetuzumab govitecan. It targets a different antibody, so it's a matter of using these drugs in sequence. 
And I think that is so much more important now, especially when we are targeting this unmet need where we used to utilize chemotherapy, and that's what community oncologists or academicians are so used to it, but now these ADCs provide us such a, a nice and neat platform where the side effect profile is favorable when you compare to chemotherapy. Absolutely, that's the idea with the ADCs, that you deliver more doses of chemo to cancer cells yeah. while sparing the normal cells. So as compared to chemotherapy, in general they have a better safety profile, but much higher efficacy. And as a generalist, when we're talking about patient-centered care, we're talking about these drugs getting approved, I think it's important what the endpoint is, right? Are our patients living longer? Can they tolerate this? So here, when it got approved, it was based on overall survival data. We have some updates on that for Tropix 2 Do you mind diving into that? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Overall survival is the most important endpoint you know, for any patient, for any provider, because that shows you can improve survival for a patient. Tropix O2 looked at sasituzumab govitikin was a standard chemotherapy for patients with metastatic ER positive breast cancer. Initially, it showed improvement in progression-free survival. There was improvement in overall survival. The drug got approved. At ASCO 2023, we're presenting two important abstracts, one related to an update on overall survival and second biomarkers. The bottom line is we continue to see the same trend. We see that there's an improvement in overall survival that's maintained with sasituzumab govitikin as compared to standard chemotherapy. And in terms of biomarkers, as we were discussing earlier, there's no strong correlation between trope 2 and outcomes. Even patients who have low trope 2 expressing tumors, they derive benefit with sasituzumab govitikin. And that's why in the clinic, it's not used. The FDA label did not have trope 2 as a biomarker for exactly this reason. And I think that's great because the overall survival data is so convincing where we had very mild uh, responsiveness with the chemotherapy and now having sasituzumab govitikin really adds on to that paradigm there. Now talking about the side effect profile, how do these patients tolerate this regimen and how are they doing when they are on it? Yeah, in general, the side effect profile of sasituzumab govitikin is similar to what you would expect with arinotikin because that's the payload the frequency and the severity is much less because that's the advantage of ADC. So neutropenia is the most common side effect, diarrhea is the other side effect we generally see, uh, alopecia and nausea. So for patients who start on sasituzumab govitikin, I usually do three things. The first is give them a prescription of Imodium. So if they have side effect a day after or over the weekend, they can take Imodium. The second is use a three-drug antiemetic regimen because patients generally then have a much better experience in the first couple of cycles, and if they're really doing well, I can always dose reduce. And the third is I prepare patients that it's possible when you come back for your next cycle, your counts might be low, mm -hmm. and we might have to hold the drug. So they are prepared that neutropenia can happen and I might have to hold the drug. Yeah, I think setting that right expectation so that the patient knows what to come. And I think it's important to reiterate that when we're talking about side effects, it's not a class effect just because you're having pneumonitis with TDXD does not mean that is what you'll see with sasituzumab. Again, these are similar class but different drugs and I think that in community, that is what is important for us. We have to get comfortable with these new agents to come up so that we can provide standard of care for all our patients. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think we got comfortable by stating that immunotherapy as a class effect will cause similar side effect profile, but here when we talk about ADCs in general, this is not a class effect. There are different side effect profile for each individual therapy, and ILD, which we are certainly scared with uh, TDXD, is not related to sasituzumab here. Yeah, and that's exactly correct. And this has been looked at extensively in the phase one, in ascent, and in tropics. We don't see pneumonitis with sasituzumab govitikin. And you bring up a good point about class effect. I think that's why thinking of these as chemo agents, there are some side effects you see with docetaxel, paclitaxel. You would not see them with carboplatin or doxorubicin. I think that's how we have to think of ADCs, that they are different agents. We have to look at the type of antibody, the type of payload. Dr. Bardia, we've seen two drugs that have been approved in breast cancer in 2023. You've been part of both pivotal trials. Congratulations. Thank you so much. No, it's great to have options for our patients and there are others coming as well. So it's good to improve overall survival and improve outcomes for our patients. Exciting times. Yeah, very Thank exciting Thank you so times. much for joining us, Dr. Bardia. Thanks for having me.